What's going on guys, Psycho here, and welcome back to the Bedrock Guide 1.19. And yes, as I've said before, this will extend into 1.20. In this episode, we're going to be all about farming, just like I said previously. Um, in between episodes, oh, we got a spider over here and a baby zombie. Fast, little prick he is. In between episodes, I did go and gather some of the supplies that we would need for this adventure um if you're interested in what i do between episodes uh feel free to follow me over on twitch at twitch.tv forward slash psycho with a zero five three five three that's twitch.tv forward slash p s y c h zero five three five three and uh over there you guys can see all the stuff i do between episodes as well as a lot of the fun stuff that we got going on in the realm as well so i set up a little area here where we're going to do our farming so to till up the plots the first thing we need is a hoe so to make a hoe we're going to take two sticks like that and then two stones you can also use iron or wood planks or whatever and we're going to grab a bucket of water we have buckets here and I've made us an infinite water source. To make an infinite water source, if you have a three long area like this, you place water on this end and water on this end, the water in the middle will always be a water source. So we're gonna grab two of those and we're gonna have a hole in the ground. We place some water down and then we're gonna place a trap door on the top of the block adjacent to it. And then we're gonna crouch and place a torch on top of the trap door. Then with our hoe, we're going to want to go out four blocks in each direction. And then we're going to want to fill in the rest of that square. What happens when we place the water in here is it makes this farmland fertile. As you can see the darker plots here and it'll keep doing it. What that what that is able to do is four blocks out in each direction. So four blocks in every direction um, makes it farmable land and the plots will never disappear unless of course you jump on them, which that happens. And we'll just go ahead and retail that. And the next thing we wanna do is get some seeds. We're gonna start with some regular seeds, the wheat seeds. These wheat seeds can be gathered anywhere from farming wheat to breaking grass. You can find them anywhere. If you break some of this grass around here, as you see, we can find some wheat seeds. So we're going to go ahead and fill in as much of this as we can with our wheat seeds. One of the good things about this style of farm is we can move four more blocks away and place a bucket of water in here and do the same thing. And instead of having to put it here for four blocks, this water will fertilize this land where this water will fertilize the place in between. So we're gonna go ahead and do it again right here, place our trap door, place our torch, and then we're gonna till all around that. Now with this set of plots here, we're gonna go ahead and I've got some beetroot seeds. Beetroot seeds, um, those are a little bit tougher to find. Those are mostly gonna be found in villages. The best place to find beetroot seeds is by going into a village that has beetroots planted and just take up the beetroots and keep the seeds. We're gonna do it once again over here and over here we're gonna place carrots and potatoes. All right, so now that the carrots and potatoes are planted, the next thing we're gonna work on is melons and pumpkins. In order to get carrots, you can either kill zombies, because every once in a while a zombie will be carrying a carrot, and the same with a potato, or you can go into a village and take up their plots as well, and find carrots and potatoes there, as well as different kinds of loot chests around the world. So, we're going to start with the pumpkins. We're going to once again place the trapdoor over the water with the torch. <laughs> So we're going to once again place the trapdoor over the water with the torch on top. And then we're going to skip a block from there. And then we're going to till the land. And we're going to do that in every direction. On the other side, once again, we're going to do the water with the trapdoor and a torch. And then go a block away and do it on all four sides. We want there to be a block surrounding each one of these plots. 
because that's how the melons and pumpkins are going to grow. Then, just like before with the other seeds, we're going to place the seed in there. We've only got one pumpkin seed for now, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit, how to get more pumpkin seeds easily. Pumpkins and melons can be found growing in the wild. Uh, pumpkins are in a little bit colder biomes, while melons can be found almost exclusively in the jungles. So while we're waiting on all those to grow, the next thing we're going to move on to is sugar cane. So the first thing we want to do with sugar cane is find a good spot, which we're going to use this spot right here, and we're just going to dig us a little trench. I like going 10 long for my first one. And then we're going to take our water and we're going to create another infinite water source. So place a bucket there, skip a block, place a bucket. And then we want to just start grabbing infinite water sources here and place them all the way around until the whole trench is an infinite water source. And then we're just going to place our sugar cane down. Sugar cane has to be placed with a water block directly next to and underneath it like such. So we got water blocks here and we'll run the sugar cane and then as it grows we'll harvest it and grow it the rest of the way around. The next thing we want to move on to now is bamboo. Bamboo is an easy block to deal with. So bamboo can be planted anywhere on dirt, sand, what have you. And you just plant it on the ground. If you keep adding to it like this, you know, it'll keep growing. Um, and you harvest it with a sword, but we're just going to go ahead and place it on the ground. One of my favorite ways to do bamboo is find a little 8x8 area. And we're going to start next to this tree. Uh, we'll probably even, yeah, let's go ahead and cut this tree down. So with the bamboo, I find me a nice little 8x8 slot. So we're going to start right here. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2, 3, 4, 5 six seven eight two three four five six seven eight three four five six seven and eight and then we'll go ahead and fill in the middle with the bamboo as well that way as it harvests we can just move around the outside and harvest the bamboo so we've got all our bamboo planted there we'll go ahead and clear the middle out and see bamboo grows pretty quick so as it grows we can easily just grab in place all right while we're waiting on the rest of these crops to go the next thing i want to move on to is some cacti for cactus they have to be planted on sand and if anything falls on the cactus the block will be destroyed so we're going to skip a few blocks between each cactus we have three of them so we're only going to plant three of them so we'll go ahead dig those holes and place the sand down just to keep it on the you know on the ground level then we'll place the cactus there cactus can grow up to three high and you harvest them with an axe which we'll go over later all right once the cactus is placed we just got a few more different crops to deal with uh, we do have mushrooms which we'll go over in a later episode and sweet berries which we've already covered but we're going to cover again and we have cocoa beans so for the cocoa beans easy as pie we have some jungle logs and then we place the cocoa beans on the jungle logs and they'll grow and we'll harvest them and then the one other thing is the sweet berries and we're going to make a proper sweet berry farm um i mean we've got a good one but we're gonna do one a little bit better so the first thing i want to do is do some crafting over here we're going to want to craft up some fences as well as some slabs to make the fence posts we put the planks on each side there and then a stick in the middle that'll give us three which is plenty for what we're going to do and then to make the slabs we're just gonna go like that and then place them in a row and that'll give us 24 of them that's plenty so outside here we're gonna find us a little spot we're gonna go about five long and we'll probably do it let's go right let's do it right here i'm gonna place a fence post down place a slab on top and they count one two three four five add one more with a fence post underneath that and then we're going to place our sweet berries underneath there should be enough for five of those now we can go through here harvest our sweet berries and never step on them now i'm gonna work around do some harvesting and get this stuff uh, all filled up and then we'll go over what we can use these crops for when it's all done and ready 
All right, so we've done a lot of harvesting of some stuff, and I got pretty much a decent amount of everything. Uh, the beetroots still are going to take a while to spread, the wheat as well, uh, both of which I can get the fruit and the seeds, they grow separately. So we're going to start with the wheat. So when you harvest a full wheat, you'll get a wheat and possibly a seed too. And then you can replant those seeds. The seeds can be used for feeding birds such as chicken or uh, parrots, or you can keep the seeds. That also works with the beetroot seeds. When you harvest a beetroot, you'll get beetroot and normally beetroot seeds as well. A full potato plant will give you about three potatoes most of the time. And then you just replant the potato. And then the same with the carrots as well. Over here with the melons, when you harvest a melon, you get some melon slices and the stalk stays. You never have to replant the melons. So unless you need the seeds otherwise, the melons, you just harvest them and keep the slices. Um, and the same with the pumpkins. When you harvest a pumpkin, you get a full pumpkin and the stalk stays. Pumpkins continue to grow. And we got another melon there. Let's go ahead and harvest that up. With the bamboo, you harvest it one high all the way around in a circle like this and then you pick up all the pieces leaving the stock at the bottom so that more grows and the bamboo grows fast as you can see we already got some growing back in where we've cut them down the same with the sugar cane they'll grow up to three sometimes four high I've never very rarely do I see them grow four high so I normally grab them as soon as I get two if I'm in a hurry uh, otherwise once I see that they're all three high I go grab them so we're gonna finish picking up this bamboo here. We got some sugar cane, we've got carrots, we've got some wheat, beetroots, potatoes, and we're gonna come over here. And when we harvest the cocoa beans like that, just seeds pop out. So it's the only thing you're gonna get from the cocoa beans is seeds. So we'll just grab these and then replant some more. So we've already covered the sweet berries. You just right click and go along it to harvest them all up and then go back and pick them up leaving the plant on the ground and as you can see with this farm style the sweet berries bushes do not deal any damage to you and then we have cactus cactus can go up to three high you just take it out with an axe and catch it when it falls watch out because the cactus does deal damage if a cactus falls onto another cactus, it will disappear. See if we get one to happen just like that. Anytime an item falls on a cactus, it does disappear, despawns, and uh, you won't have it anymore. So now the next question is, what do we do with all of these crops? And that's what we're gonna cover next after I gather a little bit more of this sugar cane. So we're gonna start with wheat. Wheat can be used to feed cows as well as sheep to breed them. You can also take it into the crafting interface and if you make nine of them in a square like that, you can get a hay bale and a hay bale can be broken back down into wheat as well. You can also place three wheat in a row to make bread, which is a good food, but bread cannot be broken back down. Next up, beetroots. You can eat them. It's about the only good use. Uh, you can also place a beetroot in the center here to make red dye. But we're going to cover dyes in another episode. You can also use beetroots to breed pigs. Um, you feed two pigs and breed them. And you can do the same with carrots. Carrots, you can eat them. You can also use them to breed pigs. Or you can place carrots in the crafting interface and surround them with gold and make golden carrots, which is the best food in the game. With potatoes, you can either place them in the furnace to get a baked potato, you can also eat potatoes or you can use them to feed pigs. Now the melons, you can eat melons, you can place them in the crafting interface like that to get some melon seeds or if you place them in a square, you can get a full melon. The full melon can then be broke back down to when by placing it and cutting it again. Pumpkins. Pumpkins are <laughs> pumpkins are fun. So to show what we're going to do with the pumpkins, we got a couple options here. So first we're going to make a pair of shears to make a pair of shears just like that. So if you place a pumpkin down and right click it with some shears, you'll get a seeds out of it and then you can create a jack-o-lantern. Then if you pick the jack-o-lantern back up, 
You can pray, place the jack-o'-lantern on your head in place of the helmet, and Endermen won't be able to see you looking at them, although it does kind of make it hard to see. If you place the jack-o'-lantern in the crafting interface here, sorry, a carved pumpkin, you can create a jack-o'-lantern, which is a light source. And I think we got a special spot for this light source here. We're just gonna place it outside the door as a decoration. You can also place a pumpkin in the crafting interface here and break it down into four pumpkin seeds. Sugar cane, you have a couple different options. One of the things you can do is place it in the middle here to make sugar, which is a good ingredient for potion brewing and other things. We'll cover that later. But the most common thing we'll be using it for is to make paper. If you paste three in a row, you get three pieces of paper. It's another thing we will also cover in a later episode. Now cactus, as you can see, anything that's dropped on a cactus is destroyed. So one good thing you can use a cactus for is destroying items, getting rid of things you don't want left laying around. Uh, it can also be used as good defense to keep mobs out. Or you can place a cactus in the crafting interface or in the furnace interface and it'll make green dye. Dyes, once again, is something we'll cover in a later episode. Now the bamboo. You can either place two bamboo to make a stick or one of the more common uses, and we'll be using this a lot in this series, is you place a string in the top center and then three bamboo down each side and you can make scaffolding. Now scaffolding is awesome. Uh, the reason scaffolding is awesome is because you can place it and it keeps growing. You can climb up on top and then just scaffold out the side up to five blocks away. When you break scaffolding, if you break it from the bottom, it all falls. If you're standing on a ledge, like we are up here, and we want to bridge out that way, as long as there's not a block at the bottom, we can take the scaffolding and it'll fall until it stacks up. You can also break scaffolding like normal. Scaffolding is amazing. You can climb up it, go down it, and it'll keep you in the middle. So scaffolding is something we'll be using a lot in the series. Now the cocoa beans. Other than planting them on jungle trees, they can be used to make brown dye, which once again we'll cover in a later series. And then the sweet berries. Sweet berries can be given to foxes, and they can be eaten, which is what we've been using them for. So that's all the major crops in the game. With your gardens, one thing I do want to point out is if you line the outsides with flowers, you know, plant flowers all along here, and you have a beehive somewhere with bees, the bees will actually pollinate and cause them to grow faster, and not only will they grow faster, but they'll also be more fruitful. So that's something we'll talk about later as well. So that pretty much covers all of our crops for this episode. Let me know in the comment section down below which crop you find the most useful and also let me know something that you would like to see in a future episode. Um, I'm thinking about doing a separate series on different types of farms and stuff and I've been looking into some of the most efficient crop farms for both early game as well as mid game and end game. Uh, let me know if there's a certain type of video you'd like to see that has something to do with you know like a side series that we could use um in the meantime i'm going to be harvesting some of this stuff up just because and we will be in the next episode getting us some diamond we're trying to get a step closer to getting to the end game and getting some of the other things we need uh so i think in the next episode we're definitely going to go get us some diamonds um with that being said guys that's going to cover it if you want to see what goes on between the episodes you want to see what's going on in the realm follow me over on twitch that's twitch.tv forward slash p s y c h zero five three five three that's psycho five three five three with a zero as always thanks for watching and i will see you on the flip side